Hello, confirmation class. Great to be with you. Hope you're doing all right. Tonight, we have our confirmation lesson 2.2. .2. And you see there, we're aiming for the fifth commandment. I want to remind you of a couple things that I reviewed with the class when we met today. One of the things I reviewed was simply to remember what commandments we've done so far. It's important to me that you get these stuck in your head. I remember night one, Pastor Fiebercorn did a good job of helping us have little tips on how to remember. Do you remember what this one is? Dun, 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 dun. Beethoven's fifth. He thinks it sounds like someone's about to be murdered in a movie. Helps him remember the fifth commandment is about murder. Thou shall not do that. One through four, though. You remember what they are? Say out loud real quick what the first commandment is before I do it. Right. You shall have no other gods. Second commandment. Don't misuse the name of the Lord your God. Third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy or the new version I like better. Keep God Sunday. Fourth commandment. Honor your father and your mother. That's right. Connected to that, something else we talked a bunch about last week. And it's really important to me that you get this down because it's one of the most important things that we can learn as we learn the commandments. Do you remember last week when we talked about the commandments both showing us a negative behavior that we're supposed to avoid, but also a positive behavior that we're supposed to embrace? Do you remember that? So in class today, the example that was used was, let's say we were talking about the second commandment. Don't misuse the name of the Lord your God. That's the negative behavior you're supposed to avoid. Other ones, don't lie, swear, curse, deceive by his name, all that stuff. Those are all negative behaviors that we are supposed to avoid. What were the positive behaviors we're supposed to embrace? Call upon God's name whenever we need him, whenever we can. Pray, praise, give thanks, all that kind of stuff. Got it? Negative stuff to avoid positive stuff to embrace. It's really important to me that you know that. It's a really important thing to know about the commandments. It's not just God tell, giving us 10 things to not do. God is teaching us all sorts of things that we should do and other things that we shouldn't do. Behaviors, thoughts that we should have, should act on, and other things that we should push aside knowing that they're bad for us, they're bad for others. Let's jump into the fifth commandment. Would you read this with me? I'm going to start right after the words of the fifth commandment. You shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. There you see it laid out in crystal clarity right there on your screen. The negative stuff, stuff we're supposed to avoid. The positive stuff, stuff we're supposed to embrace. We avoid hurting and harming our neighbors. We embrace helping and supporting our neighbors. That's really important stuff. Here's an open question for you. What are some ways that we might hurt or harm our neighbor? Not stuff you not good ideas. I mean, what are ways that we do that? When I asked in class, the first person said, stabbing him. And I thought, your poor neighbor, what did they do to you? That sounds so specific. But then it was also interesting. After we talked about things that we should avoid, you know, hitting him with any kind of weapon. Then somebody said, what about not being mean? And I thought, what an interesting, good comment from my class. What smart students I have. Yeah, not just about physical harm, but mental, emotional harm. That's important stuff for us to think about, too. Then we talked about some ways that we could help and support our neighbor's life. More good ideas from my, came from the class. Some were really interesting to me. Because they locked on to that emotional harm, they said, well, you should care about people, how they're doing. You should ask them how they're doing. And someone else said, you should try to make them feel better. Those are great examples. 
Then we talked about if we're not supposed to harm people, we should help them, protect them, preserve them, defend them. That's really, really important stuff. Then somebody said, we should donate blood, maybe donate our organs. And I thought that was such an interesting idea because it does help and support someone. But then I thought about it. I thought, you know what? When people donate blood, you don't ever meet the people that you give the blood to. And it made me remember something that's really important. When God calls on us to love our neighbor, he doesn't just mean the people who live next door to us. Doesn't even just mean that people who live in the same county as us. Every other person on this earth is our neighbor. We should work to love, help, and support them. Now, here's a Bible verse. Would you pause this video and look this up? Matthew 5, 21 to 22. Go for it. All right, if you actually took the time to pause and look, you just heard a really hard word from Jesus. You just heard Jesus say that not only should we not murder, but that we also shouldn't be angry with others. We shouldn't hate others. We shouldn't lie or slander about others because Jesus says that stuff, it's like murder. And that's a tough, tough word. Keep that in mind as we walk into looking at the fifth commandment. And we're going to look at it from the very beginning of life to the very end of life. And we're going to see stuff that we need to avoid and stuff that we need to embrace. Let's do that. As always, why don't you with the pen or pencil in hand, getting ready to write some answers down. One place where we need to protect and defend life is life in the womb. Unborn babies. If you and I are going to try to live this commandment from God to not murder, not only do we avoid those negative behaviors, we also embrace positive behaviors, supporting pregnant women, defending the voiceless in our society. No one's more voiceless than an unborn baby. Abortion is, as you know, sadly, the termination of a pregnancy before a child's born into the world. It's a fifth commandment issue, something we should take very, very seriously. Again, avoiding the negative behavior, but also embracing the positive behavior, loving and supporting, speaking up for, protecting and defending. Mentioned a moment ago that not all harm that we do to our neighbor is physical. Jesus reminded us that we shouldn't slander. How might that pop up? Here's some examples. We should be really careful to make sure that we aren't emotionally harming people. Things that we do, things that we say, that can put another person in mental anguish. Got to be really careful about that. Like we talked about before, these are this is a negative behavior we should avoid. But what do we embrace? We embrace emotionally providing, helping being kind, good, caring, being compassionate. Those are all really important things that you and I can do that help the people around us. In addition to that, you see things here. These are important conversations that our world is always having. Bullying, prejudice, racism. Using words or actions to harm other people for no reason other than something is different about them in comparison to us, how they look, how they act, how they dress, color of their skin. None of those are even close to an appropriate reason to harm someone. Those are all negative behaviors that we should absolutely work to avoid. But remember to embrace the positive behavior, to treat people kindly, to treat people equally, to protect and defend people, to serve them, to care for your neighbor, whether there's someone you ever meet or not. Physical harm, of course. Inflicting bodily pain on someone. Jesus says that's off. Can't do that. Along with some of these negatives, here's some positives. 
that we should remember that the body, ours or another's, is actually a gift from God. If you were in confirmation last year, you know that that's important. Taking care of the bodies that God has given us contribute to our overall well-being. So how do we do that? Avoid things like substance abuse. If your body's a gift from God, you can't be mixing crazy stuff in there. It hurts you. Or could impair your judgment. You could hurt somebody else. Remembering that we should be stewards of our body then, we should take care of our bodies. You see, defending our bodily lives isn't just something we do to someone else. It's something we do to ourselves too. Take good care of ourselves through diet and nutrition. Eating right, not eating too much. We should also work our bodies out, make sure that they're healthy and strong. In addition to working our bodies out, we also have to remember that part of health is rest. If you don't relax and let your body recover and heal, that's not good. Same thing's true with your mind. If your mind's always racing and you don't get enough sleep, doesn't give you time to think, be creative, doesn't give you time to pray, meditate on God's word. These are important things that we do as we care for our body and the bodies of people around us. We began at life's beginning. It's also important for us to talk about life's end. When we say that we shouldn't murder, but that we should help and support our neighbor in all bodily need, what we're saying is that God is the one and the only one who holds life and holds death in his hands. So, suicide is a danger, is a fifth commandment issue. That, of course, is taking one's own life. Euthanasia, not sure if you're familiar with that word, but that's having someone else take your life for you, having them assist you in suicide. You and I should be very compassionate towards people who are struggling with the weight of life as it seems to them. We should understand that people can get into dark places, but we should also understand that these things are fifth commandment issues. We need to remember always that only God holds life and death in his hands. I don't know if you remember last week. Remember last week when we talked about how there are times when the fourth commandment all of a sudden bumps into a different authority. We said that you cannot honor your father and mother if what they're asking you is contrary to God's word. Here's a time, too, with the fifth commandment where we say, you know what? There are situations where that are slightly different. And here's one. The war and executing criminals those are things we should pray would stop. You and I should pray for peace every single day. Even if we don't ever think it'll be achieved, we should still pray for it. We should also pray that crime would stop. But here's something the Bible teaches us that's interesting. It teaches us that God permits lawful governments to wage war, even though it includes death, and to punish criminals, even though it includes death. You might wish for it to end, might pray for it to end, but you should know that the Bible teaches us that though we might not like it, that that is a place that God allows lawful governments to act. If you pause and look up Romans 13, 4, take a look at that now. What you should see in Romans 13, 4 is exactly that. That when lawful governments carry out war or carry out punishment of crime, they're actually acting on God's behalf. You'll see that again in one of the verses that we huddle around. Let's do that now. Take a look at these verses. Take a moment to write down what they teach us about the gift of life. So pause that and come back to me. I'm going to walk through these verses one by one. I'm going to see if what you have written down bumps into some of the stuff that I think is important. Psalm 139, 
verses 14 and 15 is about how we should care and protect life from the very beginning. That God made us in such a wonderful fashion and knew us even before we were born. Proverbs 16, 17, Proverbs 6, 16 and 17. It's about how God does not love, does not like the spilling of blood. That is a bad, bad thing. Should we do one more? You still with me? Deuteronomy 32. It's a reminder that only God holds life and death in his hands. It's important for us to remember that as we think about ourselves and our neighbors in this world. All right. You can finish the rest on your own, as always. Thanks for clicking. Hope you're happy. Hope you're healthy. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Peace to you.